Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at the Toolkit Q6AC charger, this uh, big mamma jamma here. Um, take you a little stroll around the top. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is here on the sides, you have XD30 on the lower part, XD60 on the upper part. I really like that, but I do wish it came with, where'd it go? With extensions like these to get the battery out away from the charger. I don't know if it's just me, but on a charger, uh, at least where I have them sitting, which would be right about there where this one has been residing. It's just, I find it cumbersome to plug in directly up against the charger. So I prefer to have leads like this. Thankfully, my Q200 died or it was kind of on its way out. I no longer trusted it. So I've taken those from my Q200 and been using them on this. This is a 15 amp per channel, maximum output. Uh, there's some charging specs here. Why don't we just put them on the screen so you can read them and I don't have to read them to you. Uh, basically, this is a, a charger that it, it does a lot of different features and it may be something that you are interested in, especially if you're like me and you just had your favorite four port charger die. I'm a proponent of charging all four ports at the same time and I don't like to parallel port or series board charge batteries. Uh, if you look around online, many times you find that fires are related to those parallel or series boards where maybe the voltage is just out of whack on one of the batteries or something like that. And then it intends to overcharge one of the batteries that's plugged into one of those boards. And the next thing you know, you got a really bad uh, incident and possibly even worse. So I don't trust myself with those boards. That's why I don't even have a sample here to pull out and show you uh, what one looks like. But uh, if you're new to FPV, you know, we have these parallel charging boards where you can take a uh, one port and you can basically turn it into um, a port where you can charge multiple batteries off of that one port and it acts like one big battery. The problem is if you say you plug in three batteries that are storage charged and one that you discharged way too low, it throws the voltage off and the charger is just looking at the overall voltage. So you may end up with one of your batteries, maybe the battery is a touch weak that gets way overcharged and then psh, it lets out the magic smoke and fire and gets a bit scary. Uh, this one does other things. We've got USB port here around the side and we've also got this XT90 connector over here. They do give you an XT90 a lead that you can use to connect to maybe a power supply. I don't know why you would do that. So I'm a little confused why this, but if you're taking this out the field, which is kind of big to be taking out in the field, you do have an XT90 where you can power it out in the field. And around the other side, that's where we plug in into our house and we have our switch. Yay, a switch. All battery manufacturers, please. If it does more than one battery at a time, I think it's gotta be mandatory. We need a switch so that I can have it on my shelf and just turn it on and off like I like. Uh, up top here, uh, that is where you charge your cell phone if you are so inclined. Mine does not have anything up here to help hold the cell phone in place. It's kind of got the uh, Cybertruck, Tesla truck uh, design. That was the thing I saw out of the box was the, the Cybertruck. But this would have on the production versions, the versions they should be shipping to retailers and out to anybody who might be buying. Uh, it should have at least some sort of tactile surface up here. Um, it might be tape and it might not be all that cool. Um, I'm hopeful that they come over with some sort of really thin um, uh, rubberized mat that's not tacky like we use for our lipos, and they just kind of are able to coat this area. Even uh, a spray coating um, of some sort of paint that's a little bit tactile would be better than this slick plastic, but that's one note they did uh, send me that they were going to change this so that you wouldn't have any troubles with uh, cell phones sliding off the back side of this. I nearly forgot, but we've also got a couple of fans out back. Uh, I didn't find these fans to be excessively noisy in my charging or discharging, which is mainly how I use all chargers. Uh, I've been charging some batteries here recently that Beta FPV sent me for a product review that will be coming up probably in the next week to 10 days. Um, also some other batteries just for some flying purposes and keeping things charged so I'm ready to go. Uh, let's plug in a few batteries and show you the interface if you're not familiar. Something that I didn't show on screen, it does come with a USB cable uh, for charging purposes. I'm sure this isn't a data cable. And it also comes with a little screen protector that you pull these little tabs and you apply it here so you don't get gunky thumbprints on there as well. And as you might expect, a manual in multiple languages. And here we see the same information that I put on screen earlier. So we've got a tactile button right here. 
a little clicky 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 as it rattles my desk around and a metal roller which has kind of become standard of the toolkit rc brand let's uh flip the switch here on the side and i will hopefully allow you to hear it as i talk it should whir up the fans yeah and a big old beep you might be able to see uh, it had some lights up front. Those lights are indicators of your charging and what's going on there. Uh, but this is the basic interface. Let me clean the screen real, real quick. Screen's all clean. I'm gonna grab a couple of these batteries. Uh, so like I said, I, I find that plugging directly in to be cumbersome, especially with batteries with short leads, I end up pulling the balance lead all, all the time. I really wish charger manufacturers would include these little extensions. Um, I think they would be handy for a lot of folks and I think most people would appreciate it. I know that uh, me as a reviewer, it's probably something that I would talk about if they were to include it. Uh, I've got two batteries plugged in as you can kind of see here and we've got two lights on the front of our charger and they're blue so you know that's good, right? They're ready to go. Uh, let's uh, go into our menu. Uh, so basically as far as the beep and tone i'm going to talk and let that tone just continue uh the different type of batteries that we charge charge lipos which are typical batteries for fpv uh, we've got high voltage lipo lifey lithium ion lto what's lto i mm, i don't think i'm familiar nickel metal hydride pb uh uav bat that must be some specialized sort of battery like the uh uh, drone or something like that and then you click this down roller ball and you go into uh I just leave the, the cells to auto all the time. I don't change that, but you can change that if you were to decide to. Uh, modes, so we've got charge, discharge, and storage. Pretty basic stuff. I'm going to go ahead and start with charge. And then we can select our in voltage, which this is a standard voltage at 4.2. Maybe you want to go a touch higher than that, or maybe you want to go all the way to 4.25. Again, this is our standard LiPo, so we don't go to 4.35. If we want 4.35, we need to select the high voltage LiPos, or LIHVs. Uh, but I'm going to stick to standard charging current. We're going to two amps. Let's just drop that down to 1.5. I don't need to charge especially fast. And here's where we can select multiple batteries. This is one of my critiques of the uh, Hoda charger that I recently reviewed and got was that it didn't have a start all or a stop all function where Toolkit RC makes this pretty much standard and toolkit RC also I don't know if they or at least I don't think I've had any of the toolkit RC chargers that are just a single port I'm sure they make them I just think I haven't reviewed them just because I I think we should be buying chargers with at least two ports I know when it comes to budget that can be a strain on the budget but I'm just not particularly interested in single port chargers uh, but you can see that with this little different color if we Press the button on each one of these. It colorizes them in different colors. Then we go ahead and start. Now, of course, I don't have four batteries plugged in. What I've got plugged in is channel four and channel one. So one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go back. Well, let's let's see what happens. I'm gonna leave two colored there and see what it does. Yeah, channel two, low battery voltage. That's because the battery voltage is zero. So let's go back, deselect that one, click start. Ask you to charge these two channels to this voltage. And we say, yeah. So we get a little fan indicator. We get a temperature indicator. We uh, got a watts, our working hours. We've got our amperage up there as well as our voltage. And then we've got our individual cells and it pops around showing us which cells it's charging. We've got four S batteries. That's why we got one, two, three, and four cells it's charging. Uh, gives us our overall status down here. And then you can select the different channels uh, by hitting this channel button, which also doubles as your exit. So we go from one to four and we can see the different battery voltages, but we can still see that we're at 53%, 15.3 volts on channel one. And then on channel four, we're eh, about the same, a little bit higher, but it also gives our amperage that we're charging at as well. So it gives us kind of an overall status. And you can see now that it's charging, it's red, boo. Well, I guess blue is ready to go, right? So that means blue is the best. <laughs> Just a little joke because uh, we all know blue is best. So some cool little lights on the front of our Cybertruck sort of shape. This would be the headlights if you uh, compare this to a Cybertruck. And uh, it's charging away and working as we expect. If you wanted to stop everything, hit the button. You can stop individual channels that you are charging or stop all. Hoda can take the lead from Toolkit RC. Hoda, ISDT, anybody who manufactures I think this just has to be there. It's a simple, little, tiny firmware change that they just need to have. Stop all, start all. 
That sort of stuff I think we all need. So I'm gonna stop and the graphs go all the way down. Again, I think it's very important to note the size of this. It's uh, bigger than my head, bigger than my face. It's a, a pretty sizable as far as its depth, its Cybertruck sort of look. I know I keep saying that, but uh, there has to have been a design cue from Tesla on this, right? I mean, come on. Uh, this ranges in price. Uh, right now, I'm not seeing it on two of our classic FPV shops. I'm seeing it mainly on AliExpress, but I see that 533 a famous FPV race company. They also have a version of this in a two-tone, kind of a lime green or a bright green and a black. And that version is coming in at $199. Uh, AliExpress, I see it cheaper at $185 for this particular version. Again, Toolkit RC. Give us some little extensions. These things can't cost more. For four of them, if you buy them in bulk, they got to be, what, a dollar? So... I think that dollar would be well spent and well appreciated. That's my main critique about chargers in general, and it might be specific because I charge micro batteries, which have little tiny balance leads and short uh, main leads as well. And it makes it really cumbersome to plug these in when you don't have those adapters, whereas an adapter with a balance lead or a, a balance lead based adapter makes it so much easier to use these. At least sell them as an add-on. Give us an option, a drop-down of how many, uh, you know, lead uh, battery extensions or charge port extensions that we want. Please. I think that's something that we would all appreciate. Or at least this very opinionated, biased person in front of you in the moment would appreciate. Uh, if you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise about this pretty straightforward review of a Toolkit RC Q6AC charger, it just rolls off the tongue. The Cybertruck charger is what I'm probably going to refer to it as from here on out. Please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.